Hello everybody and welcome to this video. So this video is a response to a response. Ollie made a video about narrative storytelling and I guess left out music. So then Gareth made um, a response video and now I'm making a response video. And I will say, Gareth mentioned a couple songs and albums and stuff that like, as soon as I heard like what the uh, video was gonna be about, I was like, oh, dude, better talk about Nebraska, dude. Like, <laughs> dude, I f like seriously, like w w this is all over the place and uh, whatever. It's just a little chat discussion. Bruce Springsteen's Nebraska was such an influential album to me. You have no idea. Like coming out of like being in punk bands and shit and like playing with people and having like camaraderie and all this shit to find an album like Nebraska that is so good and such a isolated piece of art like the artist himself was very isolated that just helped me propel like my performing my solo performing my storytelling the song Nebraska itself is like just amazing and um, Gareth was talking about Atlantic City, which again is um, a great fucking song. Dude, that album's just really fucking good. But like, so on that sense, I would say that album, um, Johnny Cash's American Recordings, uh, Nick Drake's Pink Moon, and um, yeah, definitely some early Dylan really kind of shaped like what I would do in my solo work. You know, but that's not what we're here for. We're here for something completely different. The idea that music, songwriting, is an amazing form of narrative storytelling. Because I think what happened, popular music in the 1950s kind of like destroyed deep storytelling. And that lasted in popular culture through the 60s. I don't know, it's easier to sell the masses like happy emotional dopamine than it is to sell them on something that's gonna make them think or make them feel like shit after hearing it, you know? And I mean, that's basically what like TikTok and Reels on Instagram have become you know and the shorter the better the shorter the fix the whole thing like if you listen to like i'm a huge fan of doo-wop but if you listen to fucking doo-wop and even just like 1950s rock and roll like it's all like love songs but it's not even really love songs it's like like oh i love you but if you don't love me back i don't know what i'll do i might kill myself or like something else but it's just like so shallow you know but then you have like other songs that like worked in that thing like my boyfriend's back or um leader of the pack you know that like have more of a story but oh man i'm just singing songs in my head right now i'm not even paying attention to what i'm doing i'm like under the boardwalk but yeah, if you ever want to know like what pad storytelling is, just uh, like go on Spotify and look up like Neil Sadaka or whatever his name is. Like that'll fucking get you. But the thing I wanted to talk about more than anything about storytelling, and this is something that Gareth didn't talk too much about. But again, I don't know if it's because of the difference in cultures from where like like I'm an American he's British the whole fucking thing but at least here storytelling was the biggest part of music when radio started and when radios became affordable enough for people to get or at least pool together to get okay and then you had radio stations and you didn't have like necessarily records of all these people. You had to have the people going into the studio and performing the songs. 
all right? And then they would be <clears throat> little question and answer bits, you know? The other thing about this is before the radio, basically the only songs people knew were the songs they sang at church, okay? So once people started writing songs, like sharing their experiences from a like capitalistic standpoint, that's marketing. Everything works based off of human conflict. Personal problems, personal situations, those things sell. Okay? So when they would have like the Carter family in studio to perform some songs, some dark ass amazing fucking songs, they would talk to them about the songs and all this other shit and that became the story so the songs became the extension of their personal story and that's how the audience on listening to the radio was able to connect with these people so the way you connect more is by telling more stories and again a lot of the carter family stuff is like telling like myths and legends you know it's not like here's a very personal song about me and it's fucking even uh what's the word i'm looking for here questionable how many songs that were attributed to ap carter were even written by him because he would just go around and steal songs from people and then copyright them so piece of shit motherfucker there you go but this is the idea and this is how the early days of radio really shaped how we consume things okay and then when the 50s came around and it was like oh wow these kids really like music these kids are willing to spend their allowance money on freaking seven inches like okay maybe we should Instead of, like, having songs be mainly about, like, the struggles of living and the struggles of, like, trying to support your family and the struggles with making right decisions. When the people making records found out that kids were buying records, they changed their focus from like trying to give music to the adult crowd to bubblegum ridiculous music that would make like 14 year old girls scream when they heard the song and in doing that the way they did that was that they took all the singers and artists they had and they're like how can we make you look like an innocent 16 year old boy yes i know you're 37 but shut up. We're trying to make you look like um, if you dated a high school student, it wouldn't look weird. Okay, let's figure this out. And then that's what they did. Storytelling goes out the window because all they were trying to do was get kids excited to buy records. So that's why there's like that weird dark period of like narrative songwriting. But at that same time, you had a lot of wonderful like songs coming out of like chess records and shit like you were um like your howlin wolves your john lee hookers your um etta james you know um all that shit uh muddy waters bb king you know you had your simple storytelling like because of your blues like your um two lines different third line and then back to the next line i can't remember what that's called there's like a name for it for me after you had country music of the 20s and 30s and 40s and going into like the rock and roll and doo-wop and bubblegum of the 50s and 60s there was a lot of other cool shit that happened and, like, again, you have, like, the protest songs of the late 60s into the 70s. Um, folk music became, I'm just going to tell you a story while playing my guitar. 
And so that's huge. And anyone who's going to talk about this topic is going to hit those notes. I'm going to skip that because I'm sure a lot of other people are going to do that and do it better than I could do it. For me, and again, this might be because of where I'm raised and the whole fucking thing. But as far as narrative storytelling goes, the L.A. punk scene, to me, like, nailed it. Because you had all of these kids for the first time like like latchkey kids became a thing at least here where moms were working too it wasn't just the dad going to work but moms were working as well so these kids would come home to no one being there to look out for them to anything you had a lot of disaffected youth because a lot of people were going to Vietnam and kids knew, oh, so when I grow up, I don't actually get to grow up. I'm going to turn 18 and then be shipped off somewhere and get cut in half with a machine gun. Got it. It completely fucks someone's mind up if suddenly they are told, oh yeah, whatever dreams you have, don't count on those because more likely than not, you're going to be shipped off to fight a war that we have no idea why we're even fighting. Okay, so you had all this. You also had divorce rates really jumping. When women realized that they could be in a marriage and that didn't mean that they became property. So suddenly there's like this even ground where um, they're not going to put up with some dude shit. Okay, so you ended up with a lot of single moms. When you have a a lot of single moms, most of these moms were having to work two jobs to support their kids. So again, we're back to latchkey kids with no one looking out for them. So you have all this like youth out there running around doing whatever the fuck they wanted to do and knowing that there was no future for them. Okay, they're going to get into trouble. They're going to want to listen to music because music's fun and kids like music. But they're also going to want to listen to music that fucking speaks to them, talks about the shit they're going through, and has a little bit of a fucking edge to it to where, like, they could be aggressive listening to it and give zero fucks. But then the other thing that happened was at the same time in this area, Daryl Gates... And the LAPD started going after, like, punks. Like, going after punk kids and going after the venues that were putting on these shows. Okay? So, this is so funny. Whenever someone tries to fucking stop something, it turns it into a bigger thing. So, what what the police in LA did was take the fans going to these shows... And the bands that these kids were going to see and make them one. They made them one thing. They made them on the same level. Okay? When you do that, it ceases to become a band with fans and it becomes a movement because they are all on the same level. So doing that completely turned everything upside down. And if you listen to any of the songs like fucking Police Story by Black Flag or Revenge, um, God, there's so many. Pat Brown by The Vandals. Um, Like, there are so many great songs about the cops fucking with the kids the shows, the bands. And that was something everybody could relate to and everyone had their own story. I mean, the fucking documentary Decline of Western Civilization exists for this reason. You can ask people in the bands to tell the stories of living that life. And you can ask the kids going to those shows to tell you their stories. And the stories are going to be different, but be the same. And that sharing of storytelling, that's what creates fucking, like, just movements. I don't know how else to say it. Like, you can get the history of this area 
if you just listen to the music that came out in between like I don't know 78 and 84 like and the the picture that's going to be painted is a fucking horrifying dark picture we were talking about it on that live stream that I did I think on Sunday just the artwork the flyers that Ray, Raymond Pettibone made for Black Flag and other bands in the area like the artwork is haunting. It is just like, thanks, Reagan. This is the world you have left us kind of thing. Like, I, I just, like, I, I almost feel like story storytelling, narrative storytelling in music is almost more crucial when you have a bunch of bands who have been kind of grouped together somehow telling the same stories from their own perspectives. And I think that's when you start realizing, like, oh, shit. Like, I think another um, example of this that might be something that maybe Gareth would know more about than me, um, especially, but the, like, oi movement in the same time period. Well, like, kind of mid-80s, early to mid, early 80s, mid-80s. So, like, all the, like... Um, skinhead bands and i don't mean skinhead in the crappy like far right way i mean the working class you know like um the business blitz um foreskins how come i'm like blanking on a bunch of bands right now but like just that whole like margaret thatcher fucking closing down everything and like workers being fucked and so what do they do? They go to the pub and fucking hear the business play and um, try to drink their problems away before going back to whatever shit job they were able to finagle together over the last 24 hours. That might be another really good example of what I'm talking about. Oh, well, shit. Like, I was going to say, as far as, like, storytelling... Like, I, I dig concept albums, you know, where, like, each song is, like, another chapter in the story. And, um, like, with my stuff, uh, the Goodbye Hope album that I haven't finished. I might actually just finish that this week and put it up just so I could get that done. But, like, it has the four parts, you know, and each song is, like, a chapter in the thing and each... EP is an act in the story. Yeah, maybe I'll fucking do that. I don't know. The first two were up on all the platforms, but um, yeah, I should do that. I should fucking do that. So anyway, um, maybe I'll talk concept albums another time because this video is already running long. So Gareth, that was a great video and you made an awesome point. So everyone go check it out. I'll link it somewhere in here. Blood Rag. Issue 14 out now, along with Bunny Wilde's Poet of the Year issue. Drinking Less out now. Um, Bloodshed Review issue 2. Issue 3 will be out on Saturday, I think. And don't forget to get Winner Your Mom's Sodomy Prize for Poetry. Time hard, everybody. And I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.